Welcome to learning react with me. In this video, we are going to see the life cycle methods of a component. When I say component, I'm referring to a class component. We have already seen that a class component can be created by extending react.component. This react.component provides life cycle methods, one of which is render method, which we have seen in our previous videos. Render is the only required method while all other life cycle methods are optional. There are four stages in the component life cycle. Initialization, Mounting, Updating, Unmounting. Initialization is where we initialize state and bind methods in a constructor. If we don't initialize state, and don't bind methods, we don't need to implement a constructor for the component. The constructor is called before the component is mounted. And as we discussed earlier, you should always call super method inside a class constructor before any other statement. Otherwise, the keyword this will be undefined in the constructor. If you want to access props in the constructor, call super of props. In a typical React component, constructor is used to initialize local state, which is nothing but assigning an object to the this.state, and to bind event handlers to the class instance, which is the this keyword. Constructor is the only place where we can assign an object directly to state using this.state. In all other places, use set state method to update the state. Remember, you should not call set state inside a constructor because set state is used to update the mounted component. When you are in a constructor, the component is not yet mounted and hence set state would throw an error. Another important point to remember is do not assign props as an initial state value. You wouldn't see any error in this case. However, when the prop value updates, that won't be reflected in the component since constructor is called only once. Now, let's move to the next phase, mounting. In this phase, we have two methods, render, component, did mount. As I mentioned earlier, render is the required method in a class component. When this method is called, it will examine the props and state and return JSX which is rendered onto the DOM node. Not only JSX, you can also return arrays, fragments, portals, strings, numbers, booleans or even null. Always remember, render should be a pure function. It should not modify state of the component and it should return the same result every time it is invoked. We should not call set state in render. It will render the component infinitely. Next lifecycle method in the mounting phase is component did mount. This is invoked immediately after a component is mounted. If you want to load initial data from an API, this is the good place for a network request and to set up subscriptions. Once the API request is completed, you can update the state using set state. It will cause an extra rendering, but it will be quick that user won't notice the intermediate state. This is all about mounting. Let's move to updating phase. We have two methods here as well. One is render, which we have already seen in the mounting phase. The other is component did update method. Component did update is invoked immediately after the component is updated. It is not called during the initial render. Similar to component did mount, component did update is a good place to call API or any network requests based on the user interaction. Component did update provides an option to compare current props to the previous props using previous props parameter. Using this, 
you can avoid unnecessary re-rendering of the components. You can call set state in this method, but make sure it is wrapped in a condition. Failure to do so will cause an infinite render of the component. Similar to previous props, component did update provides two more parameters, previous state and snapshot. Previous state parameter is used to compare current state with the previous state. Snapshot parameter is undefined unless the component implements a rarely used lifecycle method called get snapshot before update. Now let's move to the final phase unmounting. There is only one lifecycle method called component will unmount in this phase. This method is invoked before a component is unmounted and destroyed. If you want to perform any cleanup activities like unsubscribing the subscriptions, clearing the timers, you can do them here. Remember, you should not call set state here because the component is going to be unmounted and it will never be re-rendered. You can find this life cycle diagram in the official React docs as well. Hope you understood the concept. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to Interview Pro.